What a difference a week can make in the LOC. You're not lying there Frank, it was one strange week this week, that has drastically changed our thoughts on the season so far. Coming up we have the weekly recap and standings, savior and failure, best and worst waiver moves, some LOC news and the coach call. Let's get straight into it. This week's marquee matchup was the father-son grudge match, but if that wasn't good enough, the plot was even bigger, wasn't it Frank? Oh yes, these two both started the season 0 and 2, and were looking to get their season started. Neither of them could afford to lose. Gridiron Gang had a worrying start, only getting 14 points from two key players on Thursday night, which their necessities quickly caught up to on Sunday. Gridiron Gang started to pull away however, and opened a nice lead. Russell Wilson tried to lead a comeback for Bear Necessities, but it wasn't enough. Bear Necessities have to be worried now don't they Frank? Starting the season 0 and 3 isn't a season killer, but it's not far off. That is a problem, but it's more the lack of talent and consistency they have on the roster, they don't figure to be able to win many games. The other contender for Game of the Week was the Tuckfords vs Predetonators. This is a long-term rivalry match, and it didn't disappoint. It was a shootout, but the Tuckfords came out on the better side of it. They simply outgunned Burdettonators 131 to 110. Both look good going forward. Want to hear an amazing statistic, Frank? The Tuckfords are 6 and 0 against Burdettonators. Unbelievable. The real QB was looking for its first win against a struggling Tom's Tyrants team this week and the result may surprise you. It wasn't so much that the real QB won, more that Thomas Tyrants only managed to score 61 points. Time to panic Frank. They get a bit of a get out of jail free card because they are dealing with some injuries, but their starters aren't performing so this might be a trend to follow. The Dream Team took on Iknan in a game that actually proved to be quite interesting in the end. They were quite close all weekend Lindsay. They were, that was until Antonio Brown exploded for Iknan. The dream team admirably fought back, but they weren't going to overcome what he did. Lastly, Forge Flyers took on ADRZ this week. Going in it didn't really have much to it, but the result has created a stir in the league. ADRZ managed a good performance for the second week going, but Forge Flyers just fell apart, barely getting 70 points. The league seems to have flipped on its head since last week. Just look at the standings. Ickman are top dog at 3 and 0, but the rest of the league is all 2 and 1 and 1 and 2, apart from their necessities. It's going to be a good season. Now we have your savior and failure of the week, for the second week in a row. Antonio Brown came up clutch for Ignan and won them the game, this week with no less than 30 points. A monster performance. We go across to the other sideline to find the failures, and it was the Dream Team's wide receivers. They didn't even combine for 15 points, terrible performance. Let's take a look at this week's best and worst waiver moves. My best has to be Bilo Powell by Gridiron Gang. This guy has been great through the first three weeks, and can come in and start for them. Good move. No question, but mine are the defenses added by Gridiron Gang, Tom's Tyrants and ADRZ. These defenses are all primed for monster weeks. My worst is definitely the Tuckford's edition of the Ravens though. They already have two defenses Frank, there is no need for a third. What a waste. Yeah I agree that's bad, and the third week in a row the Tuckfords have made it on here. Mine goes to ADRZ. You don't need to waver a kicker, come on. Ok let's look at next week's matchups, and I can tell you right now Lindsay. There are some good ones. You're not wrong there Frank. The Dream Team and Bear Necessities play each other, as do Gridiron Gang and ADRZ. Know what they all have in common Frank? I think I know this one. They are all attending the NFL game. That's right, there will be a lot of pride on the line during that trip, and I'm sure a lot of gloating too. The other coach who is making the trip, 
Coach Burdick of the Predetonators, will be squaring off against Forge Flyers. Both teams are coming off a loss, and the winner could take the lead in the division. A game to keep your eye on, Tom's Tyrants will face the Tuckfords, in what is going to be a fierce divisional matchup. Tom's Tyrants can ill afford to keep losing games, so they will be going hard. They are 5-2 and two against them, so they seem to have their number. Let's see if they can defeat them for the sixth time. Lastly, the real QB faces a tough game against Dick Nunn. If Dick Nunn can win this, they could really start to pull away from the rest of the division. If the real QB can win it though, it is going to make both divisions very interesting this season. Let's update you with some LOC news and we will get Coach Barnes on the line. Gridiron Gang is close to having Amendola back from his injury. This is a huge plus for them. Forge Flyers are not so lucky though, as it has been reported Steven Jackson could be out until Week 7, which is a massive blow to their lineup. Tom's Tyrants could get Gronkowski and Bell back as soon as this weekend, which will be a massive boost for their team, as they are in need of some star players. Tom's Tyrants traded Eli Manning and Tavon Austin to the real QB to secure Colin K. Epernick, obtaining a starting QB they desperately needed. Lastly, the Dream Team should have both Ray Rice and Reggie Bush back for them this weekend. They need them badly, they just aren't the same without them. We are here speaking to Coach Barnes of Tom's Tyrants. What's going on, Coach? Yeah, it's not so bad, thanks. Uh, just hoping to recover from the past couple of weeks, really. You had a great start to the year, but your team has been a shell of its week one self since. What happened to the team? Uh, yeah, no, I'm pretty sure I've failed to outscore my week one in the next two weeks, so that's not good. Um, but I always knew I was going to have a slow start with the injuries, so week one was more super happy rather than week two and three being really miserable. But I don't know, hopefully I'll get the injured players back soon and we'll be back to, back to the old Tom's Tyrants. You should be getting Rob Gronkowski and Le'Veon Bell back fairly soon. How big will this be for your team? Well, it's absolutely key. It's the first time I'll have a full team playing for me rather than a bunch of waiver guys trying to fill in, and I haven't always had the best backups, let's be honest. With Iknan starting to pull away slightly, do you feel like you'll have to play for a wild card spot as opposed for the division title now? No, I think I can definitely still challenge him. I've still got to play him yet, and what, with 11 games left and my team just coming back to full spot, full strength, you, um, you can't write us off yet. Last one and we'll let you get back to your team. How are you feeling about your matchup with the Tuckfords this weekend? Biggest game of your season so far? It's it's gonna I think it could be a tough matchup. They're pretty hot and cold at the moment. So not that I'm one to talk to be honest, but like I no, I, it's gonna be a tough matchup. I'm hoping to put up over a hundred points, so I don't think I'll be in the game. Okay, thanks coach. Hope you have a better performance this week. Yes, thank you. Well that about does it for us here, I hope you've enjoyed yet another episode of LOC Network with me Lindsay Alton, and Frank Sanders, have a good time this week in coaches. Best of luck guys, see you next week.